This is my go-to arcade stick. And the reason why is because it has one of the most popular joystick types for playing shmups, the Saimitsu LS32 joystick. And this has been sort of one of the default standards in the shmup community for a very long time, originating from Japanese arcades. And so I was mainly using the Sanwa JLF style joystick for many years prior when I played shmups more casually and was more into fighting games. And I found that when I used the JLF for shmups, it wasn't as optimal, mainly because of the looseness and what they call the throw. Um, and actually the sort of interplay between a lot of different parts. But basically, to, to make it simple, a joystick that's good for shmups is typically going to have a very small throw, which is basically the angle and the amount that the, the joystick has to travel and how far it goes before it actually completely comes to a stop. And so for shmups, you're doing lots of little tiny micro movements and adjustments. So you kind of want a really tight and short throw and quick engage. And so when I switched over to the LS32, I noticed that, yes, indeed, my ability to make little micro adjustments did improve over the JLF. But over the years, I always, and I'm just this like this in, in general, I always like to personalize and mod and make things uh, as customized as possible. I like to analyze what are the little things that I think could be made a little better. And for me, I always thought that the engage, the distance it takes between making a little adjustment on the joystick to when it actually presses the button could have been a little shorter, could have been a little bit tighter. So I'd always thought about different ways of modding and I've tried a few like putting tape around the actuator, this little thing that um, actually hits the button and engages it. And that doesn't work out very well because it just kind of gets torn up and it's mushy and soft and it sticks. So all of my sort of DIY attempted mods just really didn't work out at all. So I went online and I found actually there's this oversized actuator that they that somebody makes for this joystick. It's not official. I looked at its specs and I thought, yeah, this might actually work. It might just add a little bit of an extra padding to the default actuator, which, um, you know, in, in precise terms, it's only like a millimeter. I think I, I got two different actuators. One's like a millimeter more. The other one's 1 1.5 or two millimeters more. But that millimeter makes actually a big difference in how small your movements have to be in order to make a more accurate engage. So I said, what the hell, I'm going to buy this, try it out. Just so you know what I'm talking about, this is basically how the actuator works. You see, that's the green default stock actuator for the LS32 right now. And those little switches that look like sort of paddles, those actually engage with these micro switch buttons that you can't see. Anyways, so I'm going to just put a little green circle to indicate the stock actuator and how, you know, it's pretty close to those micro switches. But with this one millimeter increased actuator, you get even quicker engage. You know, this visual is kind of off because it actually looks like it's already engaging probably, but I don't know, just an illustration. So I didn't really use any fancy tools or anything. I just had a little set of pliers and a tiny little flathead screwdriver. Uh, this was to remove the C-clip. LS32s are, are known for a really annoying clip that keeps the actuator in place. It's really difficult uh, to, to get rid of. When I went online, everybody was saying how you need to get this special tool, this C-clip plier, and it costs something like 15, 20 bucks just for it alone. And I'd only probably use it in this one case. So I, I was sort of scratching my head wondering, oh, do I need to buy this or not? And then I read somebody say, no, just use some pliers, pry it off, and then you know, just force it back on. So actually I found a much better method um, that I'll show you here, how to remove the C-clip for the LS32 and put it back on, both of which are quite difficult if you don't know what you're doing. So there you see the C-clip. And the trick here really with the flathead is to get it right between those two prongs and sort of just muscle it out kind of by prying at it and it will have quite a bit of tension but shouldn't be able to break it or anything like that so just use as much tension as you need and it comes off 
Actually, I forgot to record putting in the new actuator, but trust me, I put it in there. And when, when it goes in, it actually feels like it more or less should be okay. Uh, and then I fired up a game I'm familiar with, Espagluta, and tried it out. Things felt pretty good to start with. But then I started noticing, starting to fly across the screen there when really I was only tapping it. That's not good. And as I kept testing out, I realized it was unfortunately engaging the button and basically getting stuck. Also, some corners were, were problematic and getting stuck intermittently. So I tried to fiddle with it a little bit, but it became pretty clear that this, this thing just didn't work. So that was a bit of a bummer. I knew that the larger actuator, therefore, also wasn't going to work. And this was not going to solve my at least perceived problem of wanting a shorter engage. So a little crestfallen and having spent a few bucks and wasting that. That's okay, I'll just take this as an opportunity to clean my stick. So cleaning up the stick, getting rid of dirt and dust, and putting some new lubrication on it. Hadn't done that since I got it, so a lot of dry and kind of useless lubrication that was sort of sitting there for years. You don't need a lot, just a little bit, I use a little Q-tip here. And there I am putting on the stock actuator. So with the C-clip, to get it back on actually can be trickier than taking it off. What I'm doing here is I'm actually widening it with a set of pliers. I'm using quite a bit of force to try to sort of widen it slightly. And just enough to sort of be able to put it back on kind of loosely after you've widened it. If it's not going on very well, just, just widen it a little bit more. And then when it kind of sits in place, it's going to be pretty loose. But I found that all you have to do is take those same pliers and just really press on those little notches. Really squeeze them and kind of with holding down the actuator against the spring and closing the C-clip, get a little bit of a tension there, release the spring on the actuator and it'll sort of snug right up against it and it should, should be pretty tight. So it was worth a shot, but it didn't work. It didn't solve the issue that I had at, on the outset. But I got this nice little cool blue ball top. That's always nice. And I kind of got a new appreciation for my stick. Cleaning it up actually made it feel a little bit nicer, a little, a little bit more responsive. And I started to realize maybe it was more in my head than it had to be. Going actually from the oversized actuator to the stock actuator gave me a reappreciation for how you kind of maybe do want a little bit of play, a little bit of give there, or else things can feel, things can feel too rigid. Sure, the larger actuator does engage quicker, but it also kind of results sometimes in presses that you're not intending, even if it was working as it intended and didn't cause sticky buttons. So, so I'm not sure if there is a fix required for this. You know, maybe one day I'll try out the LS56. I don't know. What's your favorite stick? Do you use the LS56? Maybe there's other sticks out there that I should try out that aren't even Saimetsu. Let me know in the comments.